It's once again my privilege to be here for the State of the City Address. Uh, this past year we've had a number of changes in our uh, city administration. Um, one of the main ones was our police chief, Jerry Hughes, came on board from the city of uh, Akron, who's retired there, and handled some of the most, uh, some of, uh, most serious uh, cases they had in Akron. He was head of the Training Bureau, and I'm glad to say he's with us today. So, Jerry, if you would uh, take a look. Who uh, introduced me to uh, Jerry? And I don't know what Jim does for the rest of his term, but just just introducing us to Jim uh, proved that he was worth the vote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Jerry has the perfect demeanor for our city. I can honestly tell you, since uh, he started, uh, I haven't heard one bad thing about him. Karen Reynolds is also our new finance director. She, for many years, was an auditor for the state of Ohio. And the people in uh, Monroe Falls should be thankful that uh, we have somebody with great integrity handling our physical matters. Uh, Jim Bowery, who many of you may know, is our uh, working service director. He performs all the administrative functions of the job, and you will also see him in plowing the snow, working on the water lines, fixing the streets. Uh, he gets out there with the shovel just as much as he's in there on the phone and the computer, uh, as I said, doing the administrative work. So we're very lucky to have him. Quite honestly, every time he gets sneezed, I sneeze as I get nervous because I can't imagine the city operating without him. Ann Nicole is our Community and Economic Development Director. Many of you know her pretty well. Uh, she recently obtained a grant uh, from the state of Ohio that will allow us to eliminate our much used basketball courts. She also coordinates our community projects, such as the Armed Forces uh, Banner Program. Uh, many of you also know our Fire Chief, Lee Chafin, who I believe is the most popular person in our city. We, uh, last couple of years, I've had to go door to door, uh, first campaigning for the office, and then we had the levies on the ballot in November. And every single day I was out there, I heard something about Lee and what a great job he does. Uh, where he works unbelievable hours, and the city's very fortunate that he's here. And uh, I had uh, drafted what I was going to say last week. So I was in the office today just to give you an idea, and one of our residents uh, had called and left me a message. And this is, uh, wants to commend Lee Chafin's fire department is wonderful. Lee went above and beyond. So proud to live in Monroe Falls, Ohio. That was a message I received after I had written We are a very well served. We have outstanding people working in the city of uh, Monroe Falls, and I'm, uh, I'm thankful for all of them, those that uh, were able to make it here and those that are not. Um, just in the interest of fairness, uh, John Hagnauer is here too. He's also one of our good council members, and we're thankful that uh, uh, for his efforts. Uh, I think, uh, is there any other council people here? I didn't say, no, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I gave my inaugural State of the City address after only being in office about one month. Um, I had a chance to uh, look at the finances from 2015 when I came in, and my last State of the City address, my inaugural one, was uh, rather somber because I had to inform everybody that the finances were not good. Uh, last year, at the end of 2015, uh, we had an operational deficit of over half a million dollars, or approximately half a million dollars. In other words, we spent more than $500,000 more than we took in in revenues. This was the uh, second time in a row that happened. It was the um, after 2016, it's the fifth out of the last seven years. It is these financial problems that necessitated putting those levies on the ballot in November. And since uh, two of them didn't pass, it's the reason why the other two are going back on the ballot here in May. When uh, we had a number of people canvassing the Monroe Falls ha um, neighborhoods, and many of our residents were surprised when uh, we were telling them how serious the financial condition uh, was. In 2000, and, uh, since 2010, the city of Monroe Falls had lost $630,000 in annual revenue. This resulted from the state's elimination of the inheritance tax and the reduction in the sales, uh, sales tax, along with the uh, non-renewal of a 4.25 mil levy back in 2014. Uh, I don't know if the uh, voters at this time either didn't think we needed the money or either didn't believe me, but uh, in January of this year, the state auditor of the 2015 uh, records, the auditor of the state of Ohio issued four cautionary outlooks and two critical outlooks regarding Monroe Falls financial condition after the 2015 audit. Uh, 
The auditor's financial health indicators result from the simple fact that the cost of providing basic city services are exceeding our revenues. Um, so if any of our citizens uh, were wondering whether or not we needed our money, uh, they don't really need to believe me anymore. They don't need to believe Jim or John or our finance director. Mm -hmm. The state auditor has said we have some serious financial issues. So once again in May, we will be asking for those other two much needed levies to uh, be, uh, be passed. It's obvious that the city cannot continue to pick up leaves, maintain our parks, city vehicles, city buildings, and provide police protection while continuing to receive less money than it costs to perform these duties. The general fund finances the plug police and maintenance of the buildings. Currently, we are in the process of addressing the aging city hall roof, which is now leaking. And in a recent council meeting, it forced half of the lights to stay off during that council meeting due to the water damage. Right now, there's a tarp over the uh, city roof as we're uh, uh, trying to uh, <coughs> rearrange the money so we can go ahead and get that fixed right away. Uh, we're hoping to have that done rather uh, rather soon for obvious reasons. Now, on the positive side, we actually have an engineer for the first time in 10 years. GPD Group uh, was contracted to be our engineer and uh, contractor or addresser engineering concerns. And the first thing they did was evaluate our payment condition, our pavement conditions, and ranking our streets based on those pavement conditions. Um, since GPD was appointed at the end of 2016, if you wonder where we got the money for that, we didn't spend uh, the money that we had originally budgeted for the law director, so we took some of the money out of the uh, legal services and used that to uh, uh, address that street study. The city's also in the process of having a uh, GPD perform a stormwater study of our area. Now, obviously, stormwater doesn't start or end at the city limits, so they're going to do more of an area study. The cost of this project is coming from uh, funding from the county summit EPA funds that we receive. Now, just so everyone's clear, a lot of people know, some people don't, that you can't use funds from different areas for like capital improvements. So I can't use that EPA fund for the roof. It has to be used for stormwater, but that's the money we're going to be using to do the stormwater assessment. Once these studies are complete, uh, since the stormwater and street paving usually goes hand in hand, uh, we will then be able to uh, do the engineering and uh, kind of assess the roads uh, to, to a priority list based on our financial uh, um, ability. And thanks to uh, passage of issue 22, we're in a much better financial position to fund these future road, road projects. The plan this year is to do the engineering on these projects and then to uh, set up the priority list, like I said, and then begin actual construction in 2018 if everything works out well, and we're optimistic about that. This year will be a very challenging year for the city of Monroe Falls, but with the help of our citizens at the ballot box and giving us the resources we need to move forward, we will begin moving our city forward. Now, on a personal note, as many of you know, I have just completed my first year, and there's a few people I need to thank because I've gone from a private citizen to a public official seemingly overnight. The first people I want to thank are our surrounding mayors. Uh, Dave Klein of Talmadge and Don Walters have been very helpful in uh, meeting me for lunch in their office at the Mayor's Association and giving me advice. However, and I don't mean to embarrass her, the mayor I'm most grateful for is Sarah Klein. I try not to be a pest. <laughs> I, literally, I literally call Sarah anytime I have a question about the, it could be the levies, it could be safety forces, and about, was about two weeks ago I called because I didn't know what kind of gifts I needed for the Mayor's Association dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and fortunately, Sarah's prevented me from embarrassing myself in front of others, so I want to thank her uh, for that. And uh, look, uh, many of you don't, uh, probably don't know this, but uh, Sarah and Lisa actually went to the same high school, Buckeye in Medina. So they got together for the first time and started talking about things, and I just kind of sat there quietly and watched them uh, reminisce about uh, <laughs> old Buckeye High School. So, but I actually, my wife here, Lee, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife Lisa's here, and I want to thank her uh, for her patience, because there's a lot of times she doesn't know when I'm coming home between uh, the obligations of Motor Falls and Motor Falls is... Uh, essentially a part-time mayor's position, which means I have to keep my full-time mayor's position to keep our 16-year-old daughter in the lifestyle she's becoming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we were actually, this weekend, we were, uh, she got invited to do some campus visits. And my daughter um, 
kind of looks at colleges, kind of way she orders meals, she orders from the right. So the more expensive the school is, she figures the better it is. So, <laughs> but I also, my, my daughter also has shown a lot of patience uh, and understanding of my, uh, my new duties. Um, finally, if you forgive me for this, uh, last year when I got sworn in, I uh, was mentioning my wife, I was mentioning my daughter, and I got choked up. I mean, it was a nice picture of it in Stowe Century. And, um, <laughs> and that's as far as I got with thanking people. And I didn't thank my mother. And I have not heard the end of it. And I said, I'm your wife. So I actually uh, told her, I said, you know, the state of the city's coming up. You know, would you like to, you know, would you like to go? And she said, no. <laughs> so this this weekend, my daughter turned six months this weekend. She's there, and my uh, my other my sister, one of my sisters was there. Uh, I see Diana Col Colavecchio. She works with uh, Diana Colavecchio over at the clerk's office. Anyway, she uh, goes. So you got the state of the city at Silverlake Country Club. My mom goes, Silverlake Country Club? I thought it was going to be at City Hall. And I said, no, it's at Silverlake Country Club. She goes, oh, I would have gone if I knew there was a meal involved. <laughs> so between my mother and my wife, I, you, know, you don't really have to worry about me having too big of an ego. So <laughs> they keep me down to earth. So if I uh, want to thank you for allowing me to be here. And with your permission, I simply want to end with thanks, Mom. <laughs>